Well, first of all, thank you for being here. We're really excited to welcome you and talk about uh, a superior education experience. So all three of us, Michigan Technical University, Northern Michigan University, and Northland College are uh, on Lake Superior, and we'll be talking about the different experiences, opportunities that you have as students um, with the Lake Superior region. So to get us started here, my name is Alex Patterson. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Northland College, which we are a four-year private college located in Ashland, Wisconsin. And my fun Lake Superior fact, there are 350 shipwrecks that have been found in Lake Superior so far. Good afternoon, I'm Jen with Michigan Tech, which is a four-year public institution in Houghton, Michigan. And I am based in the Milwaukee area as a regional admissions manager, and I work with students based in Wisconsin. And my fun fact about Lake Superior is that the average water temperature in September is a chilly 59 degrees. And my name is Kim Randolph. I'm the admissions counselor for Northern Michigan University. I'm originally based in Madison, Wisconsin and work primarily with Wisconsin students. NMU itself is a dynamic four-year public university located in Marquette, Michigan. Um, my fun Lake Superior fact is that there are 88 known species of fish that call Lake Superior their home. I love that. All right, so to get us started here, we all felt it would be really important to talk about the cultural connections that come with the Lake Superior region. Um, in the Ashland area, for example, there's three local tribes that we have close-knit connections with, and you'll find that each of the institutions have varying connections and levels of participation with the indigenous peoples of the region. Um, a lot of us have student associations, for example, uh, the Northland College uh, Native American Student Association. We also have a powwow on campus each spring. You can learn the Ojibwe language through our school. And that's something that is really important to us and all of the schools here today is that connection we have with our local um, tribal members. Um, at NMU, we celebrate our native culture as well. Uh, we have a Center for Native American Studies on our campus and a four-year baccalaureate degree in the studies of Na or in Native American Studies. We also have an active Native American Student Association that helps to host community events such as our First Nations food taster and cultural workshopping um, for the NMU community, but also the Marquette area community as well. At Michigan Tech, our Center for Diversity and Inclusion supports a variety of student organizations, one of those being our American Indian Science and Engineering Society, or ACES. Um, they are responsible for promoting the understanding of Native American culture on campus and in the community. And one way they do that is through our annual powwow that we have. Um, another great way that the students are able to connect within the organization is working with um, the national members of ACES um, to get connected with industry um, once they graduate. So one thing we wanted to highlight also that kind of ties our schools together, what makes us similar um, but also different, is our recreational opportunities that you would get as a student studying on the shore of Lake Superior. Whether it's Ashland, Houghton, or Marquette, you're going to find that there's access to the lake in all of those places. So water sports are a very big thing from kayaking, canoeing, paddle boarding, sailing, swimming, and surfing even. Um, I dare you to go look up Surfer Dan from Marquette later um, when you have a chance. He surfs not only in good weather, but also in the winter as well. So just kind of some unique um, little niches found right on our own shores. Yeah, and I have the pleasure of talking about waterfalls specifically, which I'm really excited about. Um, you know, obviously in the Lake Superior region, there's a lot of water that's kind of just inherent to our you know, unique locations here. And each of us have opportunities for you to go and quite literally chase waterfalls and explore those local regions and go hiking and experience that firsthand, like the picture in the top right corner. Uh, for example, uh, with our visit days on campus, we do take students out to Holden Falls, which is a really cool national point that was founded by Northland students that you can go out about a mile and see waterfalls and then the open lake shore. Um, so it's a really cool opportunity right in our backyard to go and explore uh, those waterfall regions. 
Um, all of our schools provide a lot of opportunities for students to get out and explore Lake Superior in the area. And we have a lot of the fun equipment that you would need. So you don't need to haul up a canoe or a kayak or any of those big items and store them in your residence hall room while you're there. Um, at Michigan Tech, our outdoor adventure program was founded in 2006 and has grown every year. You can rent everything from pudgy pie makers to for your campfire meal, to tandem kayaks, to Nordic skis. So anything really to get out and explore the area. Our staff does a really nice job of making sure you know how to use the equipment and where you're going and can point you in the right direction depending on what you're looking to explore for the day. In Marquette, we also have uh, extensive gear rentals, including fat tire snow bikes, which is new to our campus in the last year or so. Um, but one of the big things that I like to touch on when we talk about winter in the Marquette area is the UP 200 is an annual qualifier for the Iditarod dog sled races, and it's hosted right out of our downtown. So students from campus tend to find ways to volunteer and get involved with that activity. And it's just a really big fun event um, community-wide, including Northern and um, the Marquette community as well. We also have um, opportunities for students to uh, learn ice climbing and snowshoe, ski, all of the other great things that um, will be mentioned today. And one of my personal tips is if you're not a huge fan of winter, but you're still exploring our schools because you're interested in our academics, I highly encourage giving a visit in the winter and being open-minded and giving it a try. Um, the nice thing about our snow up on the Lake Superior shoreline is it's fun snow. You get to play in it. It's gonna be pretty. Um, it's just an all around unique experience. Uh, all of our schools embrace winter, and um, as Kim mentioned, even if you're not a winter person, there are things to get out and explore. Um, so one way we do that at Michigan Tech is we have Winter Carnival, which is um, an almost 100 year celebration. A uh, big part of that is our carnival statues, which you can see in the picture here. Our students spend about a month putting these together, and it's always amazing um, watching the building process and the design and really the tenacity of our students um, working out at all hours and in all weather um, to make these complete. Um, it's also part of our Winter Carnival tradition. We have the Torchlight Parade and that goes down our own ski hill that Michigan Tech owns and operates, Mount Ripley. And it's just a great way to celebrate winter um, and enjoy all the fun that we have on campus and in the area. Yeah, and with Northland here, uh, on the bottom left corner, you're going to see Book Across the Bay, which is a really cool event that we host each year um, in the Schwamigan Bay region. And it's a 10K marathon that's done at night out on the frozen lake. And at every kilometer, there's, for example, a bonfire or live music. And it's just this really cool activity to explore winter, explore the region. Um, it is super safe. I know we get asked about that a lot. They're quite literally having trucks out there. They have drag races on the ice in winter, which is really neat. Um, and it's just really a cool opportunity to also connect with our local communities, which also embrace winter at all of our schools and have cool festivals and activities that way. Um, the other side of it, if you're like me, I'm not a huge winter person personally, um, you can always have hot chocolate nights where you just kind of sit in your room with your friends and watch movies. Um, and just really embrace that kind of cottage feel of living in the Northwoods and, and enjoy that side of the recreation as well. So it doesn't all have to be outdoors, um, but certainly there is some really cool outdoor recreation in all of our spaces here. Before we move on from our recreation, um, Justin has a really great question. He was wanting He's wondering if all of the gear rental places are on campus or how do we get some larger gear like kayaks to a body of water without a car? Um, do either of you want to jump in and answer how that works on your campus? Sure. Um, I, sorry, Jen, go for it. Okay. Well, basically, uh, with Northland anyway, it's hosted right in our student center. So quite literally in the center of campus, uh, right in the main frame of our institution is our gear rental and we do have a fleet of vehicles at the institution that can help um, get some of those larger pieces of gear down to the lake. Um, but then obviously things like snowshoes and that the trails are right on campus and feed into some of those other spaces, for example. Um, Jen, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or, or Kim. Yeah, I was just going to say at Michigan Tech, our outdoor adventure program um, is based in a house on campus. It's just across the street from our uh, Memorial Union building, our student center. Um, I don't know if they 
will transport a canoe or kayak for you. Um, but I do know that there's trailers to do so and that they will help you, um, you know, either get it loaded onto your car or get the trailer attached. Um, but if you are really interested in that, I can um, follow up with you, Justin, to figure out. I'm sure they have it somewhere on the OAP website. So. And say just really briefly, Northern's in a very similar position. Students can rent and haul around with their own vehicles, but our Outdoor Recreation Center also hosts specific events for students who might not have vehicles or transportation where you can sign up and you can go with a group and they will haul the gear and introduce you um, to areas as well. So some other things to think about. Um, there's ways to get around. And if you're on a small campus, it's easy to get to know other people and uh, find someone with a car and say, hey, let's go adventure together. I know uh, it works really easily at Northern that way. And I see head nods. And I think it's really similar on the other campuses as well. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's one of the fun parts of all of our campus um, communities is that it really is a community. You know, that word holds true and it's easy to make friends and, and have that experience. So definitely a big part of that for sure. Great question, Justin. Okay. All right. So academics, so obviously that's a big part of why you would look at any of our schools. We have unique opportunities to engage with our location, engage with Lake Superior. Um, for example, you'll see in the bottom right there, like with Northland, you can get out on boats and actually do sampling uh, in the lake and in those regions. Um, something else that I always like to touch on is wildlife. I think there's a really cool network of um, biodiversity at all of our institutions, um, courtesy of Lake Superior. Um, for example, I had a friend in college who was studying bats and sonar and the way that that works with the different caves in Lake Superior. Um, so that's just one example of how you might go out and engage with wildlife with the Lake Superior and that kind of hands-on learning in the, in the outdoors that way. As a wildlifer myself, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Um, we do have really amazing wildlife up on the Lake Superior shoreline. Um, one thing I like to highlight about all of our schools is we have really awesome outdoor classroom settings or areas where students can take field trips to um, get experience in the outdoors with field studies, field equipment, and all that great stuff. Um, at Northern, we've got students studying on campus and outdoor learning areas and off campus. We've got a fleet of vans that students will um, pack into and head out to National Forests, um, the Picture Rocks Lake Shore, and a number of other places as well. And I know um, that's a commonality amongst all three institutions as students have that opportunity to get outside of the classroom, outside of the lecture hall, and really start to engage with the local environment in their studies. Uh, as you can see from the pictures that we've shown and the information we're sharing, um, that our students really have access to, to Lake Superior and the areas around it, which allows a really cool area for conducting research, doing testing in the field, and collecting and analyzing data. Um, at Tech, we've been studying the effects of stamp sand, which is um, basically the leftover remnants from copper mining and the impact it's having on the Buffalo Reef area. Uh, the sand is threatening to take over some breeding areas of um, some important fish for commercial um, as well as recreational fishing. Um, and also one note about our wildlife um, is that we have a ongoing research with the moose and wolf population on Isle Royal, which is a national um, forest, which you can only get to by prop plane or by ferry. Um, and so it's a really cool um, ongoing research project that we've got going on um, learning about that wildlife out there. And then to get into a little bit about each of our universities, um, we're all just going to highlight a few things um, about us and the areas that we're in. Um, as I mentioned before, Michigan Tech is located in Houghton, Michigan, uh, which is probably about five, I'd say four and a half, five hours from the Beaver Dam area, about four hours from Green Bay, six hours from Milwaukee. And um, we have about 7,000 students on campus, um, both undergraduate and graduate students. Um, about 120 different programs that we offer, with about 80% of those being in the STEM-focused field, and about 60% being within our College of Engineering. So wide range of programs, but knowing that there's a strong emphasis in those STEM fields um, as you're looking at Michigan Tech. Um, we have hit on a lot of the recreation um, 
And so there's a lot of fun things to do in and outside the classroom based on our area. Um, but one thing I want to talk about a little bit that I mentioned earlier is Mount Ripley, which is our own university run ski hill. It is free for students to go skiing and snowboarding. Um, you can actually even take PE classes. Um, you'd be forced to go to the ski hill for class and those range from beginner to advanced. So if you don't know how to ski or snowboard and want to learn, it's a great way to do that. If you already know how, it might be an easy way to get a couple extra PE classes um, in your schedule and just to enjoy the, the outdoor, outdoor area. Um, one unique um, classroom laboratory setting is our Great Lakes Research Center. Um, which is a really cool building based right on the Keweenaw Waterway, as you can see in this picture. Um, it's a lake level marine facility um, with state of the art laboratories. It is a LEED, LEED, LEED certified building um, and has a green roof. So that's really cool. And there's a lot of interdisciplinary research that's going on from engineers to social scientists to business professors. And there's three main areas of focus um, that they are focusing on right now. And those include um, aquatic ecology and ecosystem dynamics, marine engineering and technology, and aquatic resources and human dimension. So some things that you might not necessarily connect with Michigan Tech as an engineering school, but there's a wide variety of research um, and opportunities for things to, for students to get involved with. This is um, one of our unique vessels that we have. Um, the Great Lakes Research Center, which I mentioned earlier, actually is home to a fleet of subsurface and surface vehicles. Um, the Agassiz was pictured on the last slide, and then this is the Ibra 3, which is our autonomous underwater vehicle. Um, it can collect a lot of data about biological, geological, and physical processes. Um, occurring below the surfaces. It can dive, let me get this right, um, up to 100 meters and run for over eight hours independently. Um, so it's been a really cool way to explore uh, Lake Superior. And um, I know Alex mentioned um, his fun fact about the shipwreck, 350. Um, we have actually um, identified two shipwrecks that have been unknown before with some of our underwater autonomous vehicles. So kind of a fun fact. And also um, right now at this time, um, any autonomous system research that's done in Lake Superior needs to be done at Michigan Tech. So if that's an area of interest, um, you'd be in good hands coming to Michigan Tech to learn about that. Um, and due to you know, the location of Michigan Tech, as well as all of the schools here, um, the weather makes for warm and cold water research. Um, we actually have a partnership with the Upper Great Lakes Obser Observing System, um, which helps with the south entry buoy coming into the Keweenaw, and um, which helps track wat water, excuse me, weather data, including water temperature, wind speeds, gusts, and really cool things to keep track of um, that's important for out on the Great Lakes. Um, we also have acoustic research that goes on above and below the water and above and below the ice, um, which allows us to do some really cool um, things across campus. And then for the final picture, um, you know, in terms of doing water sampling, obviously we're on Fresh Lake, Lake Superior. And oftentimes I have students ask me, well, I want to do marine biology. I want to be, you know, out on the oceans. And from talking with our faculty members, um, there's a lot of correlation from doing, you know, freshwater exploration and going into marine biology. So I always like to point that out, that there are opportunities and things that you can get to know here before moving into marine biology, if that's something that you are interested in. And the fun stuff, um, scholarships, financial aid, and information, um, pretty important stuff. Um, Michigan Tech is a public institution. Um, so coming from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, you are considered an out-of-state student or non-Michigan resident. Um, we know attending Michigan Tech is an investment, um, and we want to try to bring those costs down for you quite a bit. Um, our largest scholarship for out-of-state students is our National Scholars Program, which is pictured in the matrix on the left. It's going to be based on GPA and then ACT or SAT. Um, and it's still being decided what we're going to be doing with that scholarship if students don't have the opportunity to take the ACT or the SAT. Um, hopefully ACT and SAT are able to get things put together and we're able to get some tests out for you all. Um, but anyway, 
on a normal year, um, and hopefully if you do have your ACT or SAT score, um, you'd be able to find where your GPA and ACT meet. Um, and depending on what section you're in, that would be the scholarship that you'd be awarded. Um, there's no additional application process for this scholarship. You just need to be admitted to the university. And it's good for four years, eight semesters, as long as you maintain a 2.5 GPA. There are some additional scholarships that I've included that are great for students from out of state to apply for. Um, some have um, pretty large amounts connected with them that you definitely would want to check out. Um, and some just have great connections across campus to, to be involved with and get some funding there. And then we always encourage students to use the FAFSA, so your free application for federal student aid. And with that, we're able to go through your student aid report and award you additional scholarships, grants, and loans for that. So I always tell students, don't worry necessarily about the sticker cost. Um, we get, get your application in and then we can work through the cost with you. And finally, ways to connect with us. Um, we are ramping up for in-person, in on-campus tours starting September 21st. So we're hoping to welcome students back um, to see campus. In the meantime, we are doing um, virtual visits. We have an interactive campus map that you can click on that shows pictures and videos of buildings on campus and where things are located, which is a great way to figure, what, figure out the location and how campus is situated. And we also have personalized um, virtual visits. So if you'd like to do that, we can connect you with a student tour guide and they'll walk you through the interactive map and answer any questions that you might have. And finally, if you'd like to chat more with me, see me more with Zoom, um, you can click on my, or actually you'd have to probably write it down from here, um, my Calendly link, and you can chat one-on-one -on -one if you have any specific questions about Michigan Tech, the application process, or anything along those lines. All right, so Northern Michigan University, as I hinted at earlier, is located in Marquette, Michigan. Marquette is the Upper Peninsula's largest city. It hosts about uh, 21,000 residents. It's not too big, not too small, has all of the great things for mom and pop restaurants, uh, which are amazing by the way, and all of the staples of large box stores such as Target, Walmart, Meyer. Um, Kohl's, TJ Maxx, all of the good stuff. So um, Marquette kind of feels like an oasis in the Upper Peninsula um, because we are the largest and we're surrounded by a lot of um, wilderness land. So our campus itself is nestled on the shore of Lake Superior as seen pictured here. Uh, we have a 360 acre campus, but it's really easy to walk from one side to the other in 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your pace. On the lower left, those brown horseshoe shaped buildings are our residence halls. If you follow that across, the crisscross sidewalks are where our academic mall is at and where most of students are taking their lectures and their laboratory classes. And then off in the distance, you see that big white blob and that's the Superior Dome. It's the uh, largest wooden dome structure in the world. And it's home to our athletics as well as um, a training center for Olympic wrestling and weightlifting too. So kind of a unique feature on the landscape. So Northern itself hosts about 7,600 students and we offer over 170 undergraduate degree programs and about 25 graduate programs. Some of our top areas of study include art and design, nursing, education, criminal justice and business, um, but I'm going to focus mostly on the experiences our biological science and environmental science students um, get while they're on our campus. In addition to the physical campus, we also have a very diverse geographical terrain that surrounds the market area and it serves as an extensive outdoor classroom. Uh, academics at Northern, um, with our outdoor classrooms and our indoor classrooms, you're looking at a student to teacher ratio of 20 to 1. So you're going to have the opportunity to really get to know your faculty members and have one-on-one -on -one relationships with them. Um, you're likely to know your advisor on a first name basis by the time that you graduate. The average lecture size at Northern is about 28 students and there are larger lectures of course, but those are broken down into other components such as labs or discussions and the average size for those is 15 students. So you're still going to get the opportunities to have those one-on-one -on -one connections with your staff and faculty. We have state-of-the-art technology that fills our campus laboratories and research stations, but what I really like to highlight um, when we talk about Lake Superior is our numerous outdoor study areas that are both on campus and surrounding campus. So our outdoor learning area is interdisciplinary. So students in the biological sciences and environmental sciences in our Center for Native American Studies all utilize these outdoor spaces as a part of their curriculums to really enhance students' learning. We have a native plant park, 
a geo park that showcases geology of the area, an eco park with a fire ring, and then there's also a greenhouse and hoop house on our campus. Um, off campus, I mentioned that we have a fleet of vans for students to take um, field trips out into the wild area surrounding our campus. Um, and that's what you can see pictured here. These are activities that students are participating in away from the classroom, um, whether it's the Little Prescott Recreation Area or Harlow Lake. It's pretty common for our biology students to take advantage of um, to studying at Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore or the Hiawatha National Forest. Uh, student research on our campus is encouraged and celebrated. Um, freshmen have the opportunity to participate in high level faculty research within their first year if desired. And we also encourage our students to present their research at local, regional, and national events, whether it's our celebration of student research right on campus, or if it's going to a national or regional conference to, to share their work. Uh, it's not only great for professional development, but awesome for personal development as well. Some examples of graduate and faculty research on our campus include water quality. We have microbiology students um, detecting E. coli on the lake shore in Marquette to um, make sure there's safe swimming conditions for folks in the area, as well as studying lake climatology and observing weather and climate on the shores of Lake Superior. Um, if you're interested in wildlife, um, we have a fish lab on campus that's studying the physiological ecology of fish migration specifically um, trout and salmon. And then we also have a faculty member studying the impact of human foods on a carnivore diet, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner, a picture of a bear. Um, they coordinate with the local DNR to get samples for their study, but also um, they're looking at other fur bearers such as Martin and Fisher as well. Students studying biology, zoology, ecology, botany, fisheries and wildlife management, environmental science, environmental studies and sustainability, outdoor recreation, leadership and management, and Native American studies really benefit from the location on Lake Superior to really enhance those studies. One lab that is really unique to Northern um, that I wanna highlight today is our Forensic Research Outdoor Station. It was founded in 2017 and we call it FROST because we love acronyms. And um, the FROST lab is unique because it's one of nine specialty labs in the entire world. And it's the only lab located in a cold climate Thanks Lake Superior, um, where scientists and students have the opportunity to conduct research on the effects of cold temperature, significant snow accumulation, and the freeze-thaw cycle on human decomposition. Um, there's an indoor facility that pairs with FROST. It's called FARL, because we love those acronyms. It's the Forensic Anthropology Research Laboratory. And there's two dedicated spaces for intake and processing of body donations, as well as analysis of findings at the labs. Um, current research that students are participating in include um, from the environmental sciences, the weather effects in forensic science and soil science. Um, criminal justice and law enforcement agencies are studying um, various forensics, uh, including the effect of human decomposition on fired bullets, which is really interesting. And then biology students are um, getting involved with studying the scavenging behavior of small mammals, such as striped skunks entomology, so the study of bugs, and then vegetation surveys at this facility too. Completely unique and we can thank Lake Superior um, for this opportunity. If you look in the lower left hand side, you see the fence. You can just barely make out the Lake Superior shoreline in the background, but it is right on the lake shore and provides a really unique learning opportunity for students. If you're interested in attending Northern, we have rolling admissions, so you can apply anytime um, after your 11th year is complete. So after your junior year is done, uh, you can start applying to Northern. We have a 2.25 high school GPA requirement and a $35 application fee or fee waiver if you qualify. We're test blind for 2021, so that means no ACT is required for admissions. And we don't have an essay, so it takes about 15, 20 minutes of your time to apply. Um, but yeah, I'm going to the next slide, Alex. We'll talk a little bit about cost and scholarships. Um, roughly as a non-resident, um, so a Wisconsin student attending Northern, you're looking at about $17,200 in tuition and about 11,000 for room and board. That's a flat rate from 12 to 16 credits per semester, includes a laptop, and the estimate also includes a um, laptop as 
I said laptop, an unlimited meal plan as well. Um, we do offer a number of out-of-state specific scholarships to help make it affordable for out-of-state students to attend Northern. So if your GPA is 3.0 or higher, you'd automatically be considered for a National Academic Award, which is going to knock tuition back to a rate that's really similar to Michigan's in-state tuition. And that's automatically granted upon admission based on your GPA. We have additional levels of scholarship with our Wildcat Achievement Awards that are offered um, without GPA, or sorry, without ACT tests, but then there's additional levels if you'd like to submit a score, if you have already tested or if you plan to test in the future, we take those into consideration for more scholarship. And then we encourage you to tour um, all of our schools. And I'm going to put in a plug, come see us at Northern too. Uh, we offer a couple of different options. You can do a virtual tour that's customized to your preference. You'd have a live virtual tour with a student and you can have one-on-one -on -one appointments with academics, financial aid, uh, admissions, et cetera. And if you're um, able to travel and you'd like to come visit, we are allowing students to come for in-person visits right now, Monday through Friday and select Saturdays as well. We're limiting the number of students per day just to make sure we can accommodate for proper social distancing and safety precautions. Um, so some dates are filling up quicker than others, but you're able to come in person or virtually, whatever is most comfortable for you. And I'm gonna turn it over to Alex now to tell you more about Northland. Awesome, well thank you for that. Um, yeah, and, uh, as we mentioned, so I am gonna talk a little bit about Northland College and you can see our campus there. Um, so we're situated right in the heart of the Shawamigan National Forest, uh, which is about 1 million acres of natural forest that surrounds campus and uh, the Ashland area. There we go. Um, so Ashland itself, we have about 8,200 individuals, which is uh, pretty exciting. Students do have research opportunities with the city itself. Um, we also have about 44,000 acres of marine sanctuary right down the road from campus, uh, which again provides for that year-round recreation, whether that's uh, hot tent camping, canoeing, kayaking, so on and so forth. Um, so that's something that we really embrace as a community here. Um, we have a lot of different festivals, such as Apple Fest, which celebrates all the local orchards in the area, um, and everything in between. So you really see this cool sense of community with the Lake Superior region, not only on campus, but in our surrounding area as well. Um, Northland, we do have a faculty to student ratio of about 10 to 1. So you get to know your professors just like you do at uh, all the schools here today. And we have just over 600 students at our college. So Northland definitely is a smaller school in that sense, which is something that we really embrace. It allows you to go out into the field, have that one-on-one -on -one experience and that hands-on research without competing with thousands of other students. So that's something that we're really uh, fortunate to have here. Um, so Northland, we have a couple of research centers that I wanted to highlight. Uh, the Center for Rural Communities is pretty cool. That's specifically looking at small towns and the social and economic implications of that. The Healing Rice Food Center, which is uh, kind of there at the bottom in the middle, that's looking at sustainable agriculture practices and the way that the climate impacts farming practices. For example, we're doing cold weather research right now in terms of how can we grow food all year round outside, even when it is those colder climates that Lake Superior provides to all of our institutions. Um, so it's a really cool, unique piece of research that we've recently started. Forest Lodge is down there on the left. That's a really cool offsite research center. Um, what you're seeing there is the boathouse. And that was the donation to campus in partnership with the US Forest Service. So Northland oversees the estate. It's out in uh, Cable, Wisconsin. There's an island that we oversee there. We use it for outdoor recreation as well as research. And it's a really cool way for you to engage with um, really the biology of the Lake Superior watersheds and the different regions uh, neighboring us. The Sigurd Olson Environmental Institute, which is the building on the bottom right, that's a really cool space right here on campus that is an earth flow building, which means it is actually sunk into a hill so that the north winds go up and over the building, which help reinforce Northwind's sustainability mission. Um, Northwind is aiming to be one of the nation's leading sustainable schools, and even our infrastructure is addressing that in addition to the academic practices. And the Sigurd Olson Environmental Institute is doing research based on the work of Sigurd Olson, who was an environmentalist and novelist. And you would have the opportunity to do writing series, potentially do research with timberwolves or loons. So 
So again, if you love those animal sciences, a lot of cool hands-on pieces there. And then finally, the Mary Burke Center for Freshwater Innovation. Um, another off-site research center that Northland has, which similar to the other schools, gets you outside and uh, in the lake taking samples and doing research to bring back to our labs here on campus. Now Northland, one of the unique things that we offer is the opportunity to study with the Eco League program. Now we're fortunate to be a member in one of the founding institutions of this program because of our proximity to Lake Superior and the Lake Superior watershed. And these are all small uh, independent private colleges here that have unique geological uh, opportunities for students. And you can study at any of these institutions for up to two non-consecutive semesters at no additional cost to you. And the idea is, for example, kind of talking about that marine biology side of things again as the rolling example, um, you have really cool access to the Lake Superior watershed, those outdoor spaces here on campus and in the region. But you may also decide you want to go to College of the Atlantic and Maine and have more access to the ocean side of things and then bring that experience back to our campus. Something that we're really proud of, it's a really cool opportunity for you as students there. Now, again, we have a lot of really cool outdoor recreation and education opportunities. We have a week-long celebration called Snowfest, which you see in the top right corner. That's Hungry Hungry Hippos, which is done right out in our mall in the center of campus. Um, so we'd like to uh, get students out of their dorm rooms, enjoying winter. You can see that Timberwolf research there on the bottom right, which to me is just crazy that you get to get up close and personal. I've actually gone wolf calling with the campus. Um, you can see the Apostle Islands there and recreational uh, kayaking, but you can also research there. And then slack lining right here on the heart of campus. Uh, again, ice climbing as well in the region and other opportunities that way, just like our my counterparts here. So a lot of really cool opportunities to engage with Lake Superior that way. Um, like my friends here, we also have really cool visit opportunities. Um, again, I always encourage winter, you may get lucky and see the sea caves, which are up there in the top left, which are these really cool caves carved into the bluffs in the local region. And when they freeze over, you can go hiking in them. Um, we are offering in-person visits, but like others, limiting the amount of people, and we are asking for face coverings at this time, as well as a lot of cool virtual opportunities. And in terms of financial aid, you know, Northland is in Wisconsin, although we don't have in-state or out-of-state tuition as a private college, which is uh, something to kind of be mindful of there. And we do academic and merit-based aid. So you have an automatic academic scholarship awarded to you right off your application. Um, and then you would do uh, a meeting with one of our counselors here virtually where we just work to get to know you better. Um, you know, we also don't have essay requirements for test optional. So we spend some time really getting to know you individually to understand your interest in the outdoors and our mission and our school and award you aid based on some of those things as well here. So pretty competitive that way. Uh, and it's just a fun way for us to get to know you as well. So again, don't hesitate to reach out with questions or concerns about that. Always here and happy to help. Uh, with that, we have about five minutes here before the end of our session. And I do wanna just open it up to questions here um, from the group. I loved hearing about Hungry Hungry Hippos. So thank you for sharing that. That sounds so fun. It's super cool. I also love, we do bull riding in our cafeteria. So they pull all the tables out and actually bring in a mechanical bull for winter. Um, so kind of an indoor like celebration of winter. It's really, really quirky. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned Isle Royale, Jen, because that's one of my bucket list items to get to. Yes, I, I haven't been there, but my husband has, so he enjoyed his time up there. Nice. And I see Justin has um, no questions, but you know we're really excited that you were able to join us today and, and have those opportunities to learn about our schools. But I do have one parting question that I think each of us should answer, and that is what is our favorite thing about living in the Lake Superior areas or having access to the lake? And I can get started since I posed the question. And to me, it's the people. I love being able to walk into a store and have them know me and like go to the bookstore and Jill's like, I already know what book you're going for. Don't worry about it. Um, that's something that I love just living in the region that I live in. 
you know, I, I, I do miss the people. I did live on campus in the area for four years before I moved down to the Milwaukee area. And so I agree, the people are great. Um, but one thing that I was excited when I lived in Houghton was that I learned how to snowshoe. Um, it's not necessarily something that you learn, but I'd never done it before. And so having the opportunity to get out and do that and have the tech trails and just the, the snow to be able to do it, um, something that I really miss being down in down here where we don't get as much snow. I think we went snowshoeing one time last year, just based on schedules and snow amounts. I was originally going to say the Midwest hospitality because you know you're gonna walk down the sidewalk and someone's gonna smile and say hello, or if you get stuck in a snowbank, four people are gonna come help push you out, um, and that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Um, but one of my absolute favorite is just the recreational opportunities between hiking, and I actually gained a passion for kayaking, and that's been really fun um, to explore up in this area. I do take my cat kayaking too. So that's always a fun, unique thing when I'm out paddling. People are like, is that really a cat? And it is. Yeah. It, he's a cool youper cat. So we, we love that. Stuff. Yeah. Love that. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you, Justin. And with that, we'll turn it to you, Britta. All right. Well, thank you. Well, I, I don't know about Justin or those that are going to watch this later, but I'm kind of like, yeah, I want to go study at all three of those schools again <laughs> and get more degrees because it just sounds so fun. So thank you all for a wonderful presentation. Um, just a few closing items here that I want to share is that um, we want to thank you for joining us. There is going to be a quick survey when you exit out. Um, just four quick questions. There uh, again are more sessions available um, through the fourth and so please sign up at WACAC.com. And again, this uh, viewing was recorded. So if you know anybody that should have been here to see this, please let them know because these schools have such amazing opportunities to share with everyone in Wisconsin. So thank you so much for your time and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Hi, everybody.